sugar and spice There's an apple pie in Sammy's Pottage Kitchen Hello and welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen yet one more time. My last show I had a special guest from Holland here and we made a traditional Dutch dish. Well today I have another guest all the way from Holland although he's been here a long time so very Canadianized my husband Jack. And what we're planning to do today is an Indonesian rice table and people are gonna think eh, what's that what's that what how is that Dutch? So I'm going to let Jack explain that. Well, it's, it became Dutch. It's not really Dutch. It came from Indonesia originally. But mm -hmm. uh, back in the early 1950s, when President Sukarno overthrew the Dutch uh, that were ruling Indonesia at the time, they exported all these people back to Holland. And of course, they brought with them all their uh, married on relatives, aunts and uncles and wives and whatever. And they were Indonesian. And they mm -hmm. brought this authentic Indonesian food to Holland and became one of the national dishes in Holland. You'll find more uh, Indonesian type restaurants in Holland than anywhere else yeah, in the world. That's true. So a little fun history. The, yeah, we got actually I got this little book in Dutch. Yeah, it says that all are best for the rice tafel, which means all the best dishes for the rice table. And this is from my mother. Yeah. And the other thing was my mother actually, she learned to, uh, to, to cook the uh, Indonesian. Indonesian foods before uh, it became really overly popular in Holland because my brother yeah. was a sailor and he That's... used to sail to Indonesia and he brought back a lot of the recipes. And the spices. And the spices. Do you and my mother them? actually wrote out all these recipes. These are probably 60 or 70 years old. And she wrote out all these, these funky recipes of <laughs> different dishes. That we can't read. <laughs> I can read them, but with a, with a magnifying glass, because I'm getting to the age where it's hard to focus. <laughs> so we just hope for their memory, you know, hoping that our memory is going to hold for this one. So I don't know what you're planning on making. Well. But I'm going to make the, uh, they call it yellow cucumber. It's, okay. a, it's a sweet and sour cucumber. Were sautéed with onions and garlic and, and vinegar and coconut milk. Okay, well I'm going to put you And it's a really dish. interesting dish, which and I, see you've I got, like making. You've got a good start on it here. I've got the uh, garlic and the onion and the things that you have. Cucumber to do. here, so I'm going to start cutting up the cucumber, and I'll leave it to you to okay. uh, do your thing. Okay, I have a knife. The cucumber, by the way, I peel them, and I take the centers and the seeds out. Yeah. So there's just the meat left over. Okay, so you go ahead and do that. I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to move this back a little bit because otherwise I'm going to block you. And Yay! That, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm bowling you over. I'm already bossing them around in the kitchen. What am I going to... Well, what else is new? <laughs> Why should it be different now? Why should it be different now just because we're on TV, eh? Jack, there's a name. I'm going to make the egg dish. So I've got eggs here. Good Sambal eggs. goreng talor. Sambal goreng talor. No, sambal goreng, sambal. I should tell everybody. Sambal what that is, is the hot spice. Is the hot spice like this. And it's it's actually pure ground up chilies is really what it is, right? Yeah. Very important ingredient in Garo all of this. Uh, sambal goreng. Goreng means fried. Mm -hmm. And talor means egg. Okay. And basically it's. Uh, but I'm boiling the eggs now, what the heck? You're boiling the eggs, but you're putting them in a sauteed sauce. <laughs> with hot spices and coconut okay. milk, right? That's right. So a trick to the eggs, this is also from your mom, I think, isn't it? This one. Oh yeah, that's the little uh, so that your punctuator. Eggs, yeah, so your eggs don't break. If you can find one of these around, I've seen a few of them. It's got a special little needle that sticks through like that. See, like it sort of sticks through the thing. So what you do is you take the fat end of the egg like that, set it down and you poke it through and then you put it in here. Let's see, you see what I'm doing? Let's move the egg dish that would help. So the fat end, always the fat end of the egg and you stick it in like that and then you put it into your warm water. So we're going to be feeding five people tonight and, and maybe the neighbors if they smell the food. I'm not sure. 
They might smell it because the smell of this food is very intense. It is. So I'm going to do a half a dozen eggs just because you're going to split the eggs in half anyway, and it's going to make a nice pan full. And it's just one of many of the dishes that I'm making today. I should explain that. I'm making also because you want to have some vegetables with the dish. Well, the so, rice table is basically a core of rice. Yeah. And then a number of side dishes to go with it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called a rice, rice table. table. And the Indonesians themselves, when they make that, I've been invited to homes of the Indonesian people. It's wonderful. They go through days of preparation. They yeah. so believe in what they're doing, and it's such a wonderful thing. And it's usually for a big gathering. I don't know that they ever don't have a big gathering of people. And so we're doing it in a nutshell because we've got just a little bit of time to do it. So I'll let you to yours. And I'm going to go ahead and get I my eggs in I diced up the onion and I've diced up the cucumber. Now I'm going to uh, uh, do a few garlics. Uh, how many do you need? I'll take this I one. Need, oh, you go ahead and take what you need first. I won't fight you for any of it. We'll put the eggs to the side because they have to come to a boil. They will boil for about eight minutes because we are in the prairie flatlands. And there's a different time for boiling eggs. Well, you know, you, would you mind turning on the frying pan for me? Do you want oil in it? I'll come over there right away. Okay. Just turn it on. Okay. Because I've got to just, I've got to dice onions and cry. I'm also going to use a little bit of this uh, ghee, which is a purified butter that you I made. You can use this onion cutting board if you want. I will. Maybe that's a smart idea. And I'm going to get uh, what I'm going to do uh, while he's uh, getting this ready. Excuse me. That's the oil you use. We're going to use yeah. avocado oil. We're going to use avocado oil because I believe avocado oil is one of the healthiest oils you can use. It also sears things as good as butter. This is heart smart. I've said it in many of my other shows that um, when you heat olive oil to too high of a point, it breaks down. It becomes trans fats. But if you're doing it with avocado oil, it doesn't ever break down on high heat. So it's a smart move. It's something I'm trying. You'd think I had a, you know, some kind of a share in the avocado factory, but I don't. <laughs> it's just that I want people to eat healthy, as healthy as they can. So I'm going to use this board, actually, and move over here since you've moved over there. And that way we won't fight, because we're not in each other's space. So before I do much of anything, I want to get the chicken prepared. I've got some wonderful chicken breasts here. And I'm going to cut off any sinew or any fats that might be there and get rid of it. Because they got to be cut into sticks. I should explain what I'm making. I'm making the egg dish. And then we're going to make a satay. And a satay is uh, a stick like this with pieces of chicken on it. And then we're going to make a spicy peanut sauce that goes on top of it. Does that sound delicious yet? And of course, we need our veggies. We're going to have more than onions and garlic. So I've grown a lot of beans. My friends have been here from Holland, and I just keep feeding them beans. Beans three ways. They pick <laughs> beans, they cut <laughs> beans, they wash beans, and they eat beans. <laughs> yeah. They're going to turn into so beanies. So what I grew. <laughs> and so I'm going to make a bean dish. And, and the, the main ingredient of all of these dishes is coconut milk. You use coconut milk with everything, even, even the peanut sauce. Even okay, so dish. I'm sauteing the onions yeah. and the garlic. Yeah, even the dish he's making, it's going to have coconut. He had what? a splatter green someplace. Uh, in this drawer, in the bottom. I hid stuff. There we go. So while he's doing that, he's trying to keep things from splattering, which <laughs> is almost impossible when you're frying, but we do our best. I'm cutting the chicken into like pieces. Some people make them different. They actually take strips like this and they weave it onto the stick. But I have always done it just in square chunks like that. And I'm going to put them into the uh, dish. And that also gets a little bit of garlic. Uh, garlic on it and it gets all uh, different spices. We got one called serre. That's kind of um, like a lemon, lemon grass, right Jack? 
Yes. Serre is is lemongrass, and then there's a uh, curry de Jawa. I can't say that, but anyway, it's a good Indonesian spice. Cumin, and coriander, and laos. What would laos be? Do you know? No, I don't know exactly. Well, it's a good Indonesian spice. But I wouldn't mind to find out how this thing works. <laughs> the Swiss ingenuity. Swiss it's ingenuity. Swiss ingenuity. Well, show me how it's done. You gotta pinch, you gotta be aggressive. You gotta put it on there. And you gotta, you know, there you go. put it on her. I'm glad See, you're, you needed uh, me in the kitchen I'm after I'm glad all. you got training for that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Look at that, voila. I'm gonna put this over here. Yeah, okay. it's tricky, but it is a Swiss thingy ding. Dingetje. Isn't that what I was? But I didn't know what it was called in so Dutch. So now we're going to add a teaspoon of kunjit, which is turmeric. Turmeric, very important, very healthy. So really, the food is quite healthy. Yeah. We've had many nice uh, foods before I ever met you. Be nice if you had more of this. What? Couldn't you? Well, there's a whole bunch. Remember when you were looking in the drawer? Thank you. <laughs> and there's a little spoon here. I would be careful because that's an open, big. Yeah, it's OK. There you go. <laughs> what? Did you want I measurements? Because measurements. We you'll measure have to look the on the website, we and I'll try and sort them. it out. Jack, how much are you putting in there? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you know everybody can have measurements. And so it doesn't now matter. I need brown sugar. I need about a teaspoon of brown sugar in there. A heap and teaspoon of brown sugar. You might notice we talk to, on top of uh, each other. Compensate for the vinegar that's going in there. Yeah, that's true because it would be very vinegary. So we've caramelized the onion and the garlic. Have you sweated We've or caramelized? We've added turmeric. Are you We've sweating or, or caramelizing? I'm sweating. You're sweating it. It's hot in here. <laughs> Proper so terminology. Now, what? I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar. Awesome. To deglaze the pan. The pan. And then while it's doing that, I'm going to throw in the cucumber. And it doesn't get cooked very heavy. It's just a light sauteing, a light boiling for. So while this is happening here. This is a perfect time to put it in later, OK? Are you done with the sugar? Yeah. I'm adding some coconut milk. Here it is. Thank you for opening that. Uh, You're welcome. Pan. Glad I get to be a I'm glad assistant. you got the technology. Now you'll see that I um, use this board for chicken, so I want to clean it immediately and disinfect it. I disinfect it with vinegar. As you can see, it just makes a really nice creamy texture. Now we'll wait till it comes to a boil. I need the vinegar, please. I have to disinfect and the chicken board. The, uh, well, you do that. And when you're done, I'll have it, because I need to add some more vinegar to this. There you go. Thank you. No problem. So all of the dishes that we're making are hot dishes. You know, spicy. Now, I never overspice, because I like flavor more than I like to have someone burning their tongue. So we're going to take a little bit of sea salt and add a little bit of sea salt to this. So Jack, I was trying to tell them that all of the dishes are spicy, except for the one you're making. That's right. And that's the cooling dish, so to speak. So that's why it's served together with the spicy dishes. So if you're into something a little bit spicy, it's, like I said, when I make it, I don't make it ridiculous, because this, the spice that I was showing you will sit on the table in a little dish, and people can add to it. It's almost the same as putting salt and pepper or spices in anything, I'd rather let people add. Are you going to need all that coconut milk? No, nope, there's a half a can there for Okay, so what I'm going to I'm do done. is... I'm just going to boil this for a few minutes, and then okay. I need this. 
and okay. I'm going to put it in this dish so it can cool down. Okay. So you might see here I'm going to marinate the chicken just a touch. I'm putting a little garlic on there. Just one, one toe, because you don't want to OD on the garlic either. And watch Although we're all eating. I need five minutes yet for the uh, for this thing to boil. Well, that's good. So that's what it takes is about five minutes. If you overcook it, then it's just mushy, right? Yeah, you want it to be nice yeah. and glazy, mm -hmm. not too mushy, not too yeah. raw. It needs just a kind bite. of in between. Al dente. Al dente. Oh, we're getting so fancy. Al dente. I'm putting just a touch of um, soy on there. Now, in Indonesian cooking, in general, there's something called sambal bachak and sambal manis. Well, again, we don't have that here. Oop, soap, I got soap. We don't have that here. So you have to figure out how to make something. So I found out that by putting some of this not so salty soy sauce, I always do a little bit of minimum salt. Uh, I don't know, I put about that much in there. <laughs> I think it's about two tablespoons. And then I take some just good old black strap, strap or fancy molasses, and you put that in there. And between those two things, you end up kind of with uh, ketchup mass. Pretty smart, huh? For a Canadian, That's when you you're say, doing yeah. pretty good. <laughs> That's when you say, not bad. What is that? Hey, it's Canadians watching this show. Us Canadians are pretty smart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> they are, absolutely. Thank goodness. We brought all the Dutch influences to Canada. <laughs> Now he's trying to tell us that we learned from you? <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sorry. So now I'm drizzling just a little bit of that mixture as well onto the chicken. But I also put on, I'm going to put on a little leos on there, a little bit of spice. Very important spice, though, I'm going to put on here. I just need you to move for a minute because I couldn't leave this out. It's oh, important. I thought you wanted to dance or something. Oh, we can dance if you want. This is frozen ginger. Oh. If you leave ginger out, you can't slice it, you can't shred it, you can't do anything with it. But if you do the frozen, it comes out just like a powder. And, and you just can always, always keep your ginger. So you gotta bring it home from the store, you put it, I wash it off before I put it in there. And then I just take off a little bit of the very end of it. Mm. Is it tasting good? Smells good. Awesome. And then I just take uh, a zester I'm like this. I'm a touch more of this coconut milk, okay? Yeah, and I just do like this. Watch, watch how it comes out. Just like powder. And you get the real ginger flavor in there instead of some powder. See? I'm going to need more of this, but I have to put it back in the freezer because I don't need it just yet. And if it thaws out, it won't grate like that. It's simple. So it's a wonderful way to save. And when you want to make stir fries, do anything like that, it doesn't matter. You can do the same thing. It's perfect. Now, I need a little bit of uh, the sambal ulik in there. Oh, I think the eggs are pretty much getting there. And we're going to drain those off in a Okay, so how's it doing? Yeah, I'm pretty well done here with this. Good, because I have another duty for you. What you do, eh? <laughs> just when you thought you were so getting I'm done. So I'm gonna pour this in this dish, and we're just gonna let that cool down. Okay. And there's a pan back here you, uh, with soapy water. You can just put it right in there. We'll clean it up. Oh, I'm I can do dishes, can I? <laughs> I give you permission. And I'm gonna get in here and just stir this together. You saw me put in now a little ginger, a little soy, a little of the sambal, I mean the little bit of the ketchup manis that I created. Don't need salt or pepper or anything yet because this is all just gonna marinate like this. It needs a touch of coconut milk as well. And then later, normally you would take them, put them on the sticks and put them in the oven. That would be the traditional way to do it. But I'm going to dry them off a little after they're finished marinating up. I'm going to be putting them in a pan, just pre-sauteing them and putting them on a stick. So, chicken's ready to go.
I'm going to stick it in the back here. Get you to wash this off too, please, Jack. I got a dishwasher. I've come up in the world. Awesome. Now I'm going to take the eggs that I had boiling over here and get them off of the burner. I'm going to turn this down because we don't need all that noise. And I'm just going to get the cold water onto these. Right? Sorry, didn't mean to turn my back on everybody. It's kind of rude, we're turning our back on everybody. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to dice up onion. No? Uh, where's that board that we did the onion on? I'd like to prefer to use right the same here. one. You want okay. to use this one? Please. Again, almost all of the dishes have garlic and onion in them, sauteed up. This is my way of cutting onion that is a fine dice. And it doesn't, you don't, you keep your fingers like this. Always keep your fingers against the blade of the knife. Use a sharp knife. Using a dull knife will cut your fingers. Always keep it like this, and you get a really nice, fine dice going on. I've got a pan sitting there. And I'm going to make the mixture first that's going to be for the egg dish. Very simple. I'm going to use one onion, fine diced like this. And the trick is, you cut the onion cut in half like this, right? So you're going to want to take the sharp knife, cut slices like this, so that you're going to be able to make dices really easy. Otherwise, you can, a lot of people, I see them cut against their hands. It's not the smart move to do. So, Jack, I'll make you. Where do you want me to put in, this? In the fridge, I think, right? Better open the fridge door first. That's a good idea. <laughs> because it needs to chill down. If it doesn't right. chill down fairly quickly, then again, it'll turn mushy. It needs to have that chance to. So, here's the fine diced onions. Excuse me. <laughs> Folks out there were blocking the camera, I know. In TV land. Just we're just having fun cooking in the kitchen, do, but folks. we don't always know where to look or what we're doing. Well, we know what we're doing when we're cooking, but we don't always know where we're looking. Okay, so well, now you have to... Uh, watch you. No, 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 you have, oh. to, you have to do the eggs. What do oh. you think this is? <laughs> what? You want to peel eggs, eh? So again, a couple tablespoons. Where's Saskia when we need her? <laughs> That's a story of its own. Our, um, our friends that are here from Holland, our Adrian Bianca, Van Nukoop, there's a name, and Saskia, their daughter. Well, Saskia came when I was catering in uh, Excuse me. Okotoks. I had a large catering company and did that for 11 years. I think I've spoken of that before. And she said, well, I'm not here just to, you know, do nothing. I want to help. I said, yeah, but you're my friend now. And this is a lot of work because we cooked for anywhere between 100 to 400 people. And we got asked to do the Canadian Tire uh, grand opening. Yeah. They wanted appetizers. Oh, gosh, you know, nobody knows how much work that is until you're in the middle of it. Yeah. So we had to do 14 different kinds of appetizers and hundreds and hundreds of them. So I said, OK, I'm getting you on deviled eggs duty. <laughs> so, and, the, and the eggs were little. like like little tiny eggs, not these big eggs that we're doing today. And she had to peel 300 of those eggs, cut the little bottoms off so they didn't rock and roll, take out all the egg yolks. I had to whip them all up with cream cheese and whatever I all made with, and then I put them all back in. And then she thought she was done. But no. Then she had to decorate them too. So when I said something about making eggs today, she just disappeared. Go figure. <laughs> OK, so now I'm sauteing up. The onions, again, it's going to be, believe it or not, it's called sweating. The onions and the garlic, right? I got a big chunk in there. I don't want that. Now, I have a little bit of ghee that I want to add to this because it's a nice flavor. It's butter, but it's purified butter. In my last show, I showed, and it will be in my recipes, how to make that. Because it's hard to buy unless you're in some really big supermarkets. I'm looking for a dish that I can put on. Can I get a small dish from behind you here, Jack? Yes, you can. It's very compact, the kitchen that Jack built. 
Now, I also need just a little bit of turmeric in there. So I need the title of the program should be Sammy's Compact Cottage Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I like it because everything is at my fingertips, really. Without, it's very handy. Yeah, there's everything quite handy, that's for sure. I'm going to leave a hand cloth, speaking of that right now. I mean, Home Depot couldn't design anything like this. <laughs> no, our walls were too crooked. You see, this was a very old house. And we got the notion that we wanted to make it a new house or something. Wasn't that the notion? Yeah, it was built in 1921. Yeah. <clears throat> when you're doing the coconut milk, you should always shake it up like that before you open it. I didn't do that with the first can, so it was separated a tad. Well, that's all right. We can still use it. So as you can see, we're just getting into now the second dish. And that's just nicely sweated. I'm going to turn it down. And now I can add the spices. And this is a matter of taste, really. But it's important to put the spices in when you're frying up the onion because it, it's like making, they call it making a curry, right? And it brings out the spice flavors. If you don't fry it up a little bit, it doesn't, the flavors can be chalky. And, and is that right, Jack? And it mm -hmm. doesn't, they don't come out quite right. And this is cumin, very important ingredient. And once more, I'm going to need ginger in there, but I'm not going to put that in just yet because that's, it's a wet spice. These are the dry spices. I'm sure the neighbors are smelling this now. And this is one of the reasons I added a little bit of the butter to it because it needs to have... Can you smell that? Yeah. yeah. Don't tell them back in Holland that I'm stealing all their recipes out here. Actually, it's funny because you... With recipes, you make it your own. You get other people's recipes, and then you say, OK, but then I'm going to do what I do with it. And that's kind of what you end up doing. Oh, yeah, very important. i got to add the um, sambal. Now, I just take a spoon like this. I should rinse it off because I have some coconut on there. And I just do a good scoop like this because you can add. You can always add to it. So I'd say a good teaspoon because this isn't a real big dish. And if you don't get the coconut in there right away, you'll be gagging because it's the, the heat of that. The coconut milk goes in now. <coughs> See? <laughs> mm. Ooh, that's a hot thing. I'm gonna need a pot holder. You should always have the pot holders handy, I guess. Because when you got several burners going, you never know. How are the eggs? Very hard to peel. Yeah, they're fresh. Sometimes when the eggs are fresh, it's a real bother. Now you see, I like this, but I like it a little more yellow. They were still warm as they came out of the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Don't touch that, it's hot. Wee oui, wee. Oui. But I'm gonna put a little bit more coconut milk in here. And then I'm going to use some of this mixture that I made, my homemade ketchup manis. Because the ketchup manis, I, am I right? Am I saying the right thing, Jack? It's ketchup manis or ketchup benting? Which one is the? Ketchup benting is sweet. Ketchup manis is salty. Is that right? Saltier. OK, then I said the wrong thing. What, what is this then? That's ketchup benting. Ketchup benting. I learned something today. OK, how are the eggs doing? Can you cut them in half? Yes. Because this will be ready in no time at all. Can you cut them on this board? Uh, yeah, I just had onions, and this has onions, so we're good. I'm just going to grab the ginger out of here, because it's a... Do hmm? you have a dish where we can put the eggs in? <gasps> you want me to put them in this? Yeah. Right here? And I need this rasping thing again. Again, I need to do the the ginger in the dish, like this. And I'm going to give it a taste because I'm not sure. But you need to have that ginger. That's a real important ingredient in this dish. Seems like it's a lot, but it's not because it comes out like really like a fine powder. So in this dish, we've got, you'll see it's fairly thick. That's just from the coconut, coconut milk. 
I'm going to put a little bit more because I think, yeah. And this, this we're going to pour over top and it holds. Like we can hold it in the oven and it, and it stays nice and warm. So I'm going to keep that cooking. Okay, it's going to be sitting over here. And it's the same mixture except I add a few different spices to throw the beans in. And I make that one a little bit spicier. So, your brother, Fritz, tell us more about him as a sailor. Well, what can I say? <laughs> he still this lives could, in Holland, right? This could be a very He's long awesome. story. He's a sailor, man, He's, I tell he's you. a sailor to the core. He, he has is. sailed all his life since he was 18 years old. He became a captain, and he has seen every corner of the globe, I, th mm -hmm. I guess. He's retired right now. He's 82. Mm-hmm and uh, wearing down a little bit, but still full of spirit and full of positive energy. And uh, we went to see him last year, and we might go see him again this year. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Oh, that's a good warning to our friends who are here. We may be coming to visit. Yeah. <laughs> we may be. It uh, would be a fun thing to do. And we don't it see if it's too often. Okay, so. They, uh, did you put enough sambal in? It's no, I think it needs a touch more. I just did a it's sample. It's not red enough. I did a sample. I go by the color. <laughs> <laughs> you need at least three three or four spoons. Oh, you can there. tell who's got the spice. I think we'll let people add their own a little bit. No, no, so no. So I'm. It's got to be hot and spicy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing I was going to talk about, Fritz. Uh, man, <coughs> I've never seen anybody can eat. He could eat just that those, much those whole red peppers and just chew them like mm -hmm. candy. Okay, so now you're seeing. That's Fritz. Yeah, that's Fritz. <laughs> so now I've got the egg, the eggs that are cut in half like this, and we take this sauce with all the eggs, with all the onions and everything in there. It's wonderful. I don't need it all because I need some of it for the beans. I'm just going to add to it for the beans. That's what's nice. I add a few different spices to it. Um, I'm also going to be making a, a spicy peanut mixture so as you see this is a beautiful uh, dish with the coconut and the spices you can see the red in it so I'm telling you it's ready Good. to go now I have some beans here I was going to put this in but I wasn't sure if I was supposed to put trassy in should have I put that in there or should I put it in this one yeah, actually it was uh, you should have probably I could put it, it in the there eggs. did you put it in the eggs or no oh. oh oh that's it that's I'm it. fired how about if I put it in this one so it has a different flavor? Yeah. That's a good idea? Yeah, sure. Now, I've I cooked up the beans. This is a funny thing. <coughs> I don't have beans in here to demonstrate, but we, we grew these, these nuts, nice Dutch beans, and I sauteed them up already and got them ready to go. I'm going to bring them over here. I'm going to show you this thing. This is an awesome thing. So here's the beans. This is a nice sauce already. I'm going to add coconut. I'm going to add trussie. I'm going to add some more spice. And this we bought for one euro, which is what, $2, not even? No, $1.50. In, in Holland at an antique bar. market. And if you look here at the, the way it's made, it, it tacks on like this and then it goes like that all around. And the beans come out beautifully Frenched like this. It's amazing, it makes them so tender. So if we had a place to tack it on and we had beans to cut. I think we should put a motor on it. Yeah, Jack. I'm making him do an awful lot of this work and I'm thinking that it's not gonna be long and there's gonna be a motor on it. I'm pretty sure. There's going to be a motor on it if I keep you going, right? I'm just going to add a little bit of cumin to this, and I think the trossi should probably be fried, shouldn't it? Into some yeah. onions. Usually yeah. with onions and garlic. You okay, try. so maybe we'll take a small dish and take that out and add to that later. All right, I'm just going to add these beans because we need to have a vegetable dish in there. So there's what I've got in here is just a little bit of mushrooms, beans. And I'm going to just set that to the side while I take out another pan. I'm going to have to have you dice up a little more onion. Can you do that for me? Oh, I got this little rock pan. That'll work just fine. This onion here? No, no, no. Oh, we have more onion somewhere. Where is the hiding? Here. Would you like to hold some I want a half of onion, please. Half of that. Yeah. And then we're just going to, and then we got to get the rice going pretty quick here, too. So I'm Yes. Gonna, Get the rice going. You should. While you're cutting up an onion and while I'm heating this pan. Because in order to make a new flavor, I just use what was left of this one because the basics are the same. It's the, uh, it's the coconut, it's the onions, the garlic, the spice, and the coconut milk, I think, right? 
Okay. Yeah. I've Lyos, got a cup and a half of water here. Lyos um, rice. And That's not water. It's rice. Yeah, we're gonna put that in into allows. And how then how many toes of garlic you want in that? Two. Two. So with a cup and a half of a rice, I'm going to use two and three cups of water. Gonna bring that, put that on here to boil because I want to dry rice. So I wanted to come to boil. I'm not gonna put a lid on because I'm notorious for uh, okay, you making can start it boil over. This with a half a a teaspoon of, of uh, trussing. Okay, and I've got a little bit of that in there. And okay. some Laos. Yeah, okay. And then, and that's gonna need, is this the, where's the Laos here? I'm going to get you to kind of clean up behind me a little bit, please. I am. Yeah, because otherwise I'm going to have a clutter. We've got the fan on because it's just a really pungent smell going on otherwise. So you see we're getting enough dishes. My last thing that I'm going to be doing are the chicken sticks because they're marinating, but that's not going to take much because I'm pan frying them and a little bit of the um, peanut sauce. So this is a fairly strong smell. I'm going to put the fan on a little higher. And how much do you think we should put in? About like that? Doesn't need much, does it? No, that's about good. Yeah. Because what is it exactly? It's a fish paste. It's a, it's a shrimp paste. It's a shrimp paste. That's right. It's a oh, fried I'm gonna, shrimp paste. And I need more coconut. More coconut milk. A little bit less. And I'm going to need some more of that spice. A little bit more spice, right? Yeah. So you need to have three. Definitely a tablespoon of that uh, sambal yeah. in there. If you're making um, Indonesian rice table thing like this, you usually do it for quite a few people. It's fun to do that because you can make a lot more dishes than what we're making, right, Jack? It's very, very. Uh, it's a social. Uh, it's spicy food, so the uh, the beverage usually uh, served with the uh, with the rice table is uh, beer, Heineken beer or Amstel, or whatever. I think we're out of beer. Now what? We got a problem. We'll have to send Audrey, Audrey to the store we need to get beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. This is, uh, we are out of beer, first of all, that's true. But also it's true Just that, kidding, Audrey. that um, the meal is traditionally served with beer. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So once more, we got this mixture going on in here. Spicy, it's <coughs> pungent, but in the long run, after it's all put together, and that's going to go into the bean uh, dish. But I, I guess from what I'm hearing from Jack is that, because that's who I learned from to cook this meal as well. The uh, actual the, the shrimp paste should have really been in with the eggs, but it's optional. Okay. Yeah, but, you don't have to. No. So I got the rice going. I've got this coming to a simmer. Then I'm going to have those two dishes going, and then I'm going to get on to the... I'm going to get you to dice, fine dice, uh, a, a little bit more onion, and squish up a garlic for me to put into this pot with some of the ghee of this purified butter here, clarified butter. And we're going to get the pinda sauce ready. Okay, I'll be ready. And then you. as soon as I've got this dish made, I'm going to get the pan out to get the chicken happening. Traditionally, Traditionally, you're going to want to put the chicken sticks, those, those satay sticks in water. And then you take the satay sticks and put them in the oven with the chicken on it and you grill them or you grill them on a barbecue. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. I do. Just way. not enough time for it in one cooking show. And I'm trying to show you how you can do this and how you can make it a little easier for yourself too. If you really decide you want to do this, you're going to think to yourself, do I want to go through all that trouble? Well, traditionally, if I'd have done this right, I would have had enough of the sauce here to go with the beans and the eggs. And there's enough change of flavor in the beans from the eggs. Now you might notice this is more yellow and this is not. Now, I got to put some spice in there. What the heck, we're missing the main ingredient, Jack. You want uh, this Did half onion diced up fine? What? No, you didn't I put did. spice I in did. there. I did, I did. You want this fine? Yeah. 
That's but, enough? Yeah, and you know how to do it, right? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Here, I show you. I show for you. Here we go. Oh, you're doing it the hard way. Yeah, no, no, like that. And then you get a fine dice, right? Okay. And then you can say you had a lesson today. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I did put the spice. If I'd have doubled that up, that wouldn't have been good. So now I'm putting that into the beans. See, look, it's all in there, the spice. Proof. I see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I'd have doubled that up, nobody would have been able to eat it. More beer. Yeah. <laughs> it is a very festive kind of food. So people, it's very common for people to want to have some beer and enjoy. Okay, so now we have got the bean dish. The rice is on the brew. I'm just gonna bring the beans to a good, um, a good heat so that they can sit with the lid on over in the corner. Because then when we're ready to serve with the rice and everything, we'll just bring it back to heat. Simple. How much garlic? Two? I need two garlics, yeah. Okay, now I have a lid for this, which is beautiful. So I can just put that to simmer for a minute. I'm going to cover the egg dish, though. Uh, do I have anything here to cover? A plate. A plate will be fine. It is, uh, I don't want to get a scum on the top of it. So that's a simple way to make a cover. And then just to save dishes, we use the same plate, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I tell you. Now I have a beautiful pan here for sauteing up the chicken. It's an awesome rock pan. Canadian tire. Go for it. Once you start cooking with some of these pans, you don't want to cook with anything else. Now, I have got the marinating chicken here. That's going to be for the, the little pot over there. You can put the, um, the garlic and onions in that. All right? Yes, dear. I'm going to clean up after myself. I'm going to... Do you think you can... Maybe open up another can of that um, coconut milk, just so we have it handy. <coughs> you just want me to see me practicing my skills, don't you? <laughs> see? He's on to me. Because I wanted to see if he learned his lessons, you know? What can I say? So you got to take away a little, bit of the, a little bit of the moisture now, because I'm going to... Otherwise, I'd have left that on there to put on the stick. But now I'm taking away some of that because that was just for marinating. But I'm going to want to sear it up in the pan, and then it'll be too wet. So I just use a paper towel for that. Lait du coco. Thank you very much. OK. And now I can put a lid as well on the rice because it's coming to a boil. I'm going to put a timer on for that because it's a 20-minute thing. Timer on. 20. You want start. the onions and the garlic in this pot? Please. With this first. Put a little bit of that in there. Uh, a a good spoon, a good, good spoon. Melt that first? Yeah, or? it's almost melted already. And I'm going to turn the uh, rice down to medium. I've got this pan on hot. I'm going to use also some avocado oil to do the searing. The last thing I'll make is the pinda. We call it the pinda sauce, right? Peanut it's sauce, a peanut yes. sauce because it can, if you make it too early, it'll break. Well, Jack, are Do we I winning? Do have to uh, melt this first? No, you can just No, just it. pour it all in there and it'll, it'll all happen. I'm just going to get this going in the pan. Oh, I guess I needed that splatter screen after all. The pan's too, too big for the splatter screen. Because then I'm going to take it out of here and just cool it really quickly. And I will use um, probably a bit of a, a surgical rubber glove, which most people, some people have allergies to the latex, so I never use the latex gloves in the kitchen. But it's going to be a bit hot to handle. A little too hot to handle. Yeah. We don't even have any Indonesian songs on our CDs or nothing. What the heck? Do we do about my that? My sorry, my rice is so fair from the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move the can sit to the side, the egg dish, because I'm going to need this one to heat for the peanut sauce. 
Now, have you got a clean board? Because I'm going to get you to do another funny job. That I know you'd like to sit down. I really know you would. You want me to cut the peanuts? Yeah, I want them chopped up. Yes, please. yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Hey, great that. I'm looking for my turner. There it is. So just as simple as that. So you get a nice sear on it because I use some of that butter. And I'm going to put a lid on it too and add some flavors after I get the color. I like having the color on it. Because very often when you put it I'm in the use oven. This large board because yeah. they jump all over the place. Okay. When you, uh, if you're doing this and you put them just in the oven, wow, I can hardly see out of my glasses. Uh, it doesn't allow for the color to come in. So I'm doing that so that I can get some color. And because I had some coconut milk and everything on it, it's getting a bit colored. If you put it on a grill, it does pretty good. Okay, the rice is happening. And this is happening, and you're happening. And then we're gonna take a little bit of coconut here and mix that with that. And I'm gonna mix some of the sambal no, what's this called? Uh, ketchup benting. Ketchup benting. I'm going to mix that with the coconut a little bit like that. See, I just mix that in with that. Because that's going to go with the peanuts. And it becomes a sprinkle that you put on top of the food. And you can toast it and everything, too. I mean, it's up to the individual how you want to make it. It's just a little top. That's nice. The rice is going to town. i got to turn him down. I'm spilling over. Oh, I know, we have friends over there in the living room that are going to help us do dishes and clean up my stove. I hear groaning, I hear groaning. <laughs> Just kidding. Saskia had the right idea, she took off for the day. She took off for the day, yeah, what the heck. So, that's okay. How fine do you want these cut, like this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, put them in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of this... Um, a little bit of... Uh, sambal in there. Not in here. No, no, in the coconut, and then you'll mix it all together. That's how you get the spice going on, right? Because yeah. everything has spice, but doesn't necessarily have to have tons of spice. I'm going to have to get a, a pan from the back there. I'm going to put this to the side, because I'm getting too many things cooking, because that's what happens when you have a whole bunch of things going on. So that's the bean dish just sitting to the side. I'm gonna get the chicken dish ready to go. And this one going on, awesome. That's with a little bit of garlic and onion. So far we don't have the fire alarms going off. That's a, kind of a good thing. And I've got some peanut butter here. So I've got the garlic and onions going on in here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the peanut butter, like this. I'm going to shut the chicken off because it's ready. Put this in here. So peanut butter. And it's going to need coconut milk. It's going to need ketchup benting. I think I said it right this time. So now we're going to start with a bit of a pin peanut butter sauce. It's just got to be cooked very little. It doesn't want to be cooked too much because it'll break. That means the fats will separate from. I have to get a pan out of here. So I can put the chicken in there. We're going to town now, Jack. Now I'm just going to put that in there because it has to chill a little so I can handle it enough to get it on the sticks, see? Like I said, it's uh, an easy way to do it. So now, I need more coconut milk in there. Quite a bit, in fact, because you want to have enough of this. And I want to add also, again, the sambal, the spicy sauce, the sambal. How are you doing, you peanut nut cutter? I'm talking to you. 
You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm busy. We didn't put we didn't put this back in the freezer. Now it's thawing. Oh no. Uh, well, so yeah. you see, you got the spice. I put the sambal in with it. I put the coconut. I've got um, garlic, onions, all that. Now I can bring it to heat, but I got to put in a little bit more. I've only got enough peanut butter in this jar that I'm using all of it. So it doesn't matter that I dig in there with my spoon. It makes a really nice sauce. And if you have any left over, you just put it in your fridge and you can use it as a spread even. It's, it's an awesome kind of sauce. So there you go. Now that you can use, you can put in, everybody has taste of themselves. You can put in some other spices and things in, you know, that make a difference too. Anyway, now this chicken is getting, I just gotta go get a glove or else I'm not gonna be able to handle. Can you see what Jack is doing there? Chopping that all up. And I'm going to do surgery. I'm going to put the chicken on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to, if that's hot enough, can I move in over here, Jack? You go right ahead, my sweetheart. Because I'm going to need to kind of be in this corner. And I'm gonna get you to check the rice, kind of fluff it up and see how it's going and if it needs to have a temperature change. Who, me? My husband just very nicely offered to do this with me because I knew that it was too big of a job for me to do myself. And uh, so I said, yeah, can you please help me with this because I don't know how else I'm gonna get it done. And I, I said to him, well, you just have to come and help me with a couple things and then you can go sit down, but I think he found out I lied. Yeah, you lie. <laughs> So now I'm just going to get those, everything's ready, except the rice is something that needs to be fluffed there, so make sure you come and take care of that for me, Jack, because I'm busy with the pinda sauce and getting the chicken on the stick and getting it on a plate, okay? Where's the rice here? Now a traditional dessert for the Indonesian food is a flambéed banana, but we're not doing that one today. I think I did that on another show. It's hard to remember what I'm doing. See, now you just feed them on like this. And I don't know, you put about five, you should never put um, two or four or six, so I always try to put about five um, pieces of meat on a stick like this. I think this is actually considered, I guess, it's not really peasant food. This would be a Indonesian feast food, am I right? Yes. And then what's interesting... <coughs> it's celebratory. Yeah, but what's interesting, there's usually a lot, so it's left over. There's leftovers from the, from the uh, eggs, from the chicken. Leftovers from the from rice the beans. table. Yeah, from the rice. And then they make something called... Nasi goreng. Nasi goreng. And that would be the peasant food. That would be kind of the foods that people who just didn't have so much would be enjoying. So I'm just gonna put four. No, I can't put four, I just said that. In culinaries, you have to do odd numbers. And I'm just gonna show you how we serve this. Jack, did you mix that together, the rice, uh, the, I'm gonna have you mix the peanut mixture and the coconut together so I can do a sprinkle. This? Yeah, please. Just goes into it. where? Yeah, into the peanuts. Okay. There we go, we got Five nice sticks. The rest I will sort out later. Ooh, let me put them to the side. And then we're going to very nicely put these dishes. I gotta put the bean dish into this when you're finished, Jack. Behind yep. you. Put it into this serving bowl. Busy. <laughs> but 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 I'm just getting you to do more. I know. And now I noticed that the You're peanut sauce pushy. was quite thick. So I add just a little bit of coconut milk to it, right? Now, what you do with this, I got so many things in my way, I don't think we can even see. The rice is very... Uh, It'll work. It's re almost, almost ready to go? Almost, yeah. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take the peanut sauce and drizzle it across like that. Like this. And we're going to take some of that sprinkle and put it on top of that. I'm going to set it 
to the side. I could crown that one actually with a piece of chicken because I, I cheated this one out of something. So, I'm going to set it over here. I'm going to put the sambal because anybody can add that. I'm going to shut off the fan because it's so noisy. But we needed it in order to make that happen. Now, we've got a little bit of the ketchup bunting. I'm going to take a little bit of the sprinkle. You right got me now. searching. And I'm going to put a little bit on top of it like this. Now, people can do that themselves. And this sprinkle, remember, was the chopped. It's actually a roasted candied nut. And it's a little bit of coconut with a little bit of sambalulic. That's as simple as that. Now, we got the rice over here. We've got the egg dish over here. We're going to set it all in a row here because then you get to see a little bit how to do this. So you put the rice in the middle like that. You put the right? rice in the center. About that much. Okay. And you will take some eggs and you put them on the side like that. And can uh, can Cole see that? Yeah. And usually. And then you take a little bit of the vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I usually put a little bit of the peanut sauce on the side too, that people can have more if they want. Now yeah. there's many more dishes. We've only made a few. Usually oh, yeah. you can have like upwards to 20 different dishes. Yeah. But you should see what it looks like. And of course everybody's going to get a sample. Would you two like to come in here and have a sample? Then you take a stick well, like this. Well then this is your chance for romance. We'll and put some... Come on Adria, Bianca, our friends from Holland. I'm going to give them a sample of our dish. Well, here we are. This is our Indonesian rice table. And I'd like to invite my friends Bianca and Adri to come on here and have a taste of it. Good and thank Jack very much for stepping in and helping. Also thank Bianca for stepping in later and doing that. Have a sample. Enjoy. Let me know. I want to, he I want to hear when you go, mm. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everybody for coming out and enjoying us having fun in the kitchen because we do, obviously. And... Uh, Cook with a cup of love all the time. We'll see you That's real soon. Good. Love the life you live. I keep on keeping on and enjoy the new recipes. Yeah. Till next time. Ooh, I like a bit of wasabi. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm.